While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation. Are you aware that the Federal Reserve is tightening its monetary policy? Yes, you must have already known this, as the continuous spike in interest rates is affecting many people's life. What are the effects of the Federal Reserve's new policy on the economy? Well, let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into this. The Federal Reserve increased its target federal funds rate by another 0.25% during its July 2023 Federal Open Market Committee meeting, over a year and a half after making significant policy adjustment. Since March of 2022, this has been the 11th rise. The target Fed's fund rate now ranges from 5.25% to 5.5%, the highest level since early 2001. Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, said that the rate increase in 2023 might not be the final one and that the Fed is not expected to start decreasing rates in this year. The Fed's easy money posture, which was in place since the 2008 financial crisis, has drastically changed from its current rate policy. The Fed's fund rate was in the range of 0% to 0.25% throughout most of that time, including 2020 and 2021. As inflation soared in March of 2022, the Fed changed course and swiftly increased rates for the balance of 2022 and into 2023. Additionally, the Fed remained committed to ending its previous quantitative easing program, which compromised buying treasury and mortgage-backed assets. The purpose of QE was to increase the liquidity of capital markets. From a height of nearly $9 trillion, the Fed is now reducing the amount of these assets on its balance sheet. In conjunction with increasing interest rates, this so-called quantitative tightening strategy aims to restrain inflation by reducing economic growth through higher borrowing costs. Cost of living rises, which were essentially unimportant for decades, started to dominate consumer concerns in early 2021, and are still a problem today despite great progress. Consumer price index headline inflation decreased sharply from 9.1% from 12 months ending in June of 2022 to 3% for the year ending in June of 2023. Although it is rising, inflation is higher than the Fed's long-term goal rate of 2%. After the July 2023 meeting of the Federal Reserve, Powell declared, We intend to keep policy restrictive until we are confident that inflation is coming down sustainably to our 2% target, and we're prepared to further tighten if that's appropriate. Powell emphasized that core inflation, a crucial indicator of living expenses that exclude the unstable food and energy sectors, is still significantly higher than the headline CPI figure of 3%. For the 12 months ending in June of 2023, the core CPI is 4.8%. So what does the Fed focus on? It looks like the primary aim of the Fed is to tame inflation. Powell continued, The worst outcome for everyone, of course, would be not to deal with inflation now and not get it done. To emphasize the Fed's laser-like focus on controlling inflation. According to Powell, if you go through a period where inflation expectations are not anchored, inflation is volatile and interferes with people's lives and with economic activity. The Fed is under less pressure to make a swift course of correction. The threat of inflation will still be managed with a correction, said Rob Hallworth, Senior Director of Investment Strategy at US Bank Wealth Management. The Fed hasn't yet seen an all-clear signal that inflation is subdued for good, says Rob Hallworth. Even with the improvement in recent inflation data, the expansion of wages in particular is a cause for worry, according to Haworth. A weaker employment market, which will help limit wage increases, is one indicator of the Fed's performance. According to Haworth, the labor market indicators have not yet shown the Fed's initiatives to be effective. He points out that the unemployment rate is still below 4% and that there are many more open positions than there are unemployed people. Haworth thinks that the Fed uses wage growth as a key metric to gauge its success in battling inflation. So what is the role of the Federal Reserve? The Central Bank of the United States is the Federal Reserve. Its duties include managing bank operations, preserving a reliable payment system. However, investors are mostly concerned with the Fed's monetary policy. The Federal Reserve has to fulfill three mandates. The Federal Reserve is responsible for ensuring price stability. The Fed aims to keep the inflation at a steady level and its present goal is long-term inflation at an average of 2% each year. It also aims to provide maximum sustainable employment. The term maximum employment, as it's officially known, technically refers to a labor market with a low unemployment rate. The Fed's objective is not to reduce the unemployment rate or the labor force participation rate. Instead, it's to make more subjective evaluation of the workplace. And also, it is responsible to maintain long-term interest rates. 
Numerous facets of economic activity, including consumer mortgages and commercial financing, are influenced by interest rates levels. The Fed aims to maintain rates at a low level as a result. So are the rate hikes nearing an end? Well, despite the worries that Fed rate hikes may increase the likelihood of a recession, the US economy has shown to be unexpectedly resilient thanks to the labor market's ongoing resilience. The GDP growth rate was 2% in the first quarter and 2.4% in the second quarter of 2023. It makes room for more rate increases in 2023, given the possibility that sustained economic growth could keep inflation high. According to Haworth, the Fed is explicitly saying that it will react to what the data, such as an upcoming inflation readings and economic growth numbers, signals to them. In 2023, there will be three more regularly scheduled meetings of the policymaking FOMC. The fact that the Fed is unlikely to lower rates below present levels at any point in 2023 may be more significant. Many market analysts have predicted that the Fed would drop rates this year, but after the July FOMC meeting, Powell said that the Fed was not in a hurry to reverse direction. I'm saying we would be comfortable cutting rates when we're comfortable cutting rates, and that won't be this year, I don't think," Powell said. Haworth points out the fact that the Fed has more room to continue its tighter monetary policy given the favorable economic indicators up until this time. The Fed is under less pressure to make a swift course correction. The threat of inflation will still be managed with concentration. Higher interest rates are meant to restrict economic growth, which would therefore slow inflation. If it is successful, the labor market will probably shrink as businesses reduce hiring and investment as a result of increasing borrowing rates. Powell said that reducing inflation is likely to require a period of below-trend growth and softening of labor market conditions, in remarks made after the May 2023 FOMC meeting. To create the conditions for long-term price stability and maximum employment, price stability must be restored. How does the bond market respond to the new changes, though? Since early 2022, the overall interest rate environment has undergone a significant adjustment. For the first time since 2010, rates on the standard 10-year US Treasury note increased above 4% in October of 2022. And after that, the 10-year Treasury yields started to decline. But they again reached 4% in early March of 2023 and again in July. Unusually, the yield on short-term Treasury securities is higher than the yield on bonds with maturities of 10 and 30 years. The yield on three-month treasury bills was 5.51% at the end of July of 2023, and the yield on two-year treasury notes was 4.82%, and the yield on 10-year treasury notes was 3.86%. In contrast, under normal circumstances, investors would choose bonds with longer maturities since they would offer higher yields. Will the investment environment change? Where may investors discover the most alluring changes in the market as the Federal Reserve gets closer to what may be the apex of its most recent cycle of interest rate hikes? Fixed income assets are more appealing now that interest rates are higher. Although short-term debt instruments might offer greater yield, managing total portfolio duration by integrating long maturity US treasuries is crucial for positioning a portfolio for the long run. The risk-reward dynamic for stocks has improved recently. Corporate profits will be a major worry in 2023, but they have surpassed expectations. Equity markets appear to be in a more favorable position than they have been recently, but investors should be ready for market volatility. Thus, the US is entering a new economic era as the Federal Reserve tightens interest rates. This has led to some savings accounts returning meaningful interest for the first time in years. There has been a reshuffling on Wall Street and a wave of corporate bankruptcies as bad bets turn sour. The end of free money years is leading to a re-evaluation of risk-taking. The Fed's decision-making has had a significant impact on the economy. Now, what do you think about the Fed's tightening monetary policies? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon. And of course, stay tuned for more videos.